Yeah, there's a lot going on. He walks out on a troubled team. Within one week, Chip Kelly, who'd been given everything he asked for at UCLA, within one week, he interviews for the Raiders job. He interviews for the Washington Commanders. Both those were offensive coordinator positions. And then he winds up taking the Ohio State job because he has a longtime relationship with Ryan Day. He walks out on trouble. 35 and 34 in six seasons at UCLA, won one bowl game. With their heritage, with his resume, what he did at Oregon, they were only ranked 58th in the nation in recruiting this year. He lost his quarterback of the future, Dante Moore, whom he benched. He transferred to Oregon. He showed no interest in helping raise the NIL profile for UCLA athletes. He struggled to keep players from going to the transfer portal. He strong-armed and was a distant from a relationship with the boosters. He was condescending to the media. He lost four offensive assistants in a span about a month. You know, this, this guy had the unbelievable record at Oregon, went to the Eagles and failed, went to the 49ers and failed, had a substandard haul at UCLA. And what really bothers me is everything he asked for financially to raise the football program to a true national level in terms of things for the athletes, travel, training tables, food, counsel, they gave it to him. Athletic department has a $36 million deficit because of what he asked for, what they gave him, and he turns his back and he walks out. There's such a litany of unhappiness about who he was, what he did while he was there, and by the way, they were 35 and 34. It's unbelievable. Selfish. I think what he did was dishonorable. I think it was despicable. It was classless. He walked out on all the kids he just recruited in the transfer portal and the kids he just signed last week in the February signing position. And the veteran players are left behind. I, I, I don't understand it. I'd say good riddance to 10 miles of bad road. It is interesting. In about a 72-hour period, UCLA did Zoom calls with 11 different people. On Monday morning, they committed to Deshaun Foster, former star running back, had been an assistant coach at UCLA for 11 years with Kelly prior to that with Jim Mora, had just left UCLA to become the Raiders running back. So he spent seven days, quote, in the NFL, has now come back. <laughs> and it was a very popular hire, um, I am told, by – some of the significant alumni boosters, and obviously by the guys in that locker room who believe in this guy. So Chip Kelly is here. He's gone. He hasn't done bleeping anything since he left Oregon, and he leaves behind just an unbelievable mess. And they're going to the Big Ten, and they're losing all these players. And the transfer portal window for them has now reopened where these kids can jump out of UCLA because the coach left. It's a disaster. You know, UCLA is going to become Washington State, a bottom feeder. Mm. If they lose more players, we'll see if Deshaun Foster can put his finger in the dike and stop the flood, stop the bloodshed. So you tell me your thoughts on Kelly, the timing of what Kelly did, what Kelly did, what UCLA did on behalf of Chip Kelly, and now they have to face this mess. Go ahead. Well, First of all, you're right. UCLA has really bad financial problems. I think that's part of the reason they're going into the Big Ten because they couldn't fund. And it's not just football. They've got gymnastics and I mean a ton oh, the of Olympic sports. sports and everything. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they have a huge athletic program, and so the deficit is you know it's football drives the deficit, but the other sports are part of it. I generally speaking do not blame people for leaving a job to go get something that maybe is better for their career. And in this case, I think Chip Kelly probably saw that. I mean, you get you, you know, you kind of link up with Ohio State and then more opportunities are going to come down the road. But yeah, he does leave people hanging. And that's just what happens when a coach leaves. The, the timing was unusual. You would think that if he would have left, he would have left right after the season. Exactly. You know, so now this does put UCLA into a bind. But it's interesting, too, because, you know, we've talked about Chip Kelly and you know, we generally have liked him because he's like a, a bright light. He's a smart guy. But it's interesting how this happens so quickly that he abandoned UCLA and now is just heading out to Columbus. Well, his relationships were pretty shabby over the last two years. There are a lot of boosters, big money givers, donors, 
we're, we're done with them. They, 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 but, you know, I blame the president. I blame the athletic director. You know, Martin Jarman might be the next guy that should leave. He's the AD. They, they negotiated. They couldn't fire him. $8.9 million buyout. If the guy fails and then you got to pay him eight nine point nine to leave, what's it say about your business acumen? Right. That's a big issue. I just have a problem with him doing it this late in the season. And what about the, the kids he just signed that he has, he has left behind? Uh, it To me, it's just a bad, bad look. But then Chip Kelly doesn't give a bleep about what the media thinks. What well, the now alumni all players think. are going to go into the portal, too. I exactly. mean, it's, everything is going to be blown up. So – that's the end result. Deshaun Foster stays home. He's a UCLA guy. We'll see if they surround him with a, a kind of a different coaching staff along the way. So we've thrown a lot of topics on the table here.